Hey everyone, uh, welcome back to Toasty TCG. Uh, I'm sure you're not wondering why I'm back, so uh, let's just talk about why I'm here. Uh, I got a 6-1, yeah, 6-1 at a sneak peek today with a uh, Pearly using the uh, new Cyberstorm Access cards. Um, won the mat, the Field Center, a little Ultra Rare promo. Uh, all in all, pretty good. Uh, I liked the deck a lot. It was a lot of fun for sure. Um, before I get into the deck profile, I'm just going to say uh, my matchups were I 2 0 to Dark World deck. Uh, round 2, I lost to a plant deck, like a Sun Avalon, Rika sort of deal. Um, then round 3, I beat Rescue Ace 2 0. Um, round four, Four, I played against Labyrinth, and um, that's a very, very good matchup for Pearly. Wow. Uh, I'll get into that in a bit. Uh, round five, I played against Super Heavy Samurai. Um, that deck, I kind of just hand trapped to hell and back and just went really well. Uh, I go to top four. I 2 1 against Sword Soul. That was a pretty grindy matchup. And then finals, I play against the plant deck again, and that time I was able to win. Uh, so all in all, it's really good. Uh, deck played really well. I don't think I bricked at all. This deck's super consistent. This grind game is insane. Um, they need to open like really specific cards to like beat this deck and stop it from just going second turn grind out again. Because um, the combos are really consistent. The recursion's really good. Um, so first off, I'm going to talk about the Pearly, so this is like the pile of the memory cards, so I'm going to get to that in a moment. Uh, so first off, we're going to talk about the monsters and the non-quick plays. Uh, so three Pearly, three Pearlily, uh, these cards, just insane. Uh, neither effect of Pearly is once per turn, so you summon it, you excavate three, uh, you take any pearly spell or trap to your hand, and then you bottom the others. Um, and then once per uh, not once per turn, uh, something once crazy. Uh, you can reveal a pearly quick play in your hand, and then XZ with it using pearly, the revealed quick play. And then you XZ summon on top of it a pearly XZ that mentions the quick play. Uh, so it's really cool. It's kind of like Zodiac, Zodiac. And then Perlily searches out the uh, non-quick plays. The, um, there's a field spell and a continuous spell. And then instead of exceeding with your hand, you exceed with your graveyard. Uh, so a lot of value recursion going on there. Uh, all, all these are really good. You want to play six for sure, three and three. Uh, there's not really a, much of a reason to play less than that. Just because, like, you want you just want them. These not being once per turn just means, like, if they try to stop you, then you just go into another Pearly, you just keep going. Uh, Pearlily is just really good because searching out uh, the continuous spell and the field spell, which I'll talk about, are absolutely nuts. Uh, so those six, just mandatory in my opinion. Uh, next up for the non-quick play spell and traps. Uh, first off, we're going to talk about my friend Pearly. Uh, this card is super nutty. Uh, you reveal, you pay five, which isn't going to be important, but uh, you reveal three pearly cards. Not even quick plays, not even just monsters, not even just spell and traps, just cards. Uh, your opponent has to pick one at random, which usually doesn't matter because you're going to reveal three of the same thing most of the time. And then you get that card to your hand, and then this card's recursion is absolutely insane. This is the card to stop. Ash this, ogre this, just get this card off your, your opponent's field if you're playing against pearly. Uh, this card's insane. Um, so the recursion is if they out your XZ, you now take three pearly quick plays from your grave with different names, which is very important, and add those cards back to your hand. So if they out any of your XZs, you go plus three because they tried to break your board. Card's insane. Um, then for the field spell, I was playing one field spell, but I meant to play two. Uh, the thing that I ended up playing two of by accident was per leap. I meant to play two field spell, one per leap. Um, the old build that I was playing played two per leaps because we didn't have per lily yet. Um, and what I mean by that is this card has an effect in grave where you banish it. 
to shuffle three pearly monsters from your grave back into your deck. So before we had Pearlily, and we are just playing three pearly, you needed the second copy just to make sure you could keep playing the game. Um, it also lets you rank up or rank down. So you target a pearly XZ control and summon a pearly on top of it with a different rank. Um, that comes up from time to time, depending on what you have. Uh, the field spell is absolutely nuts. This card is, it's why I was saying that it's like the Labyrinth matchup is just super clean. Um, so this thing says that your special summoned pearlies can't be targeted the turn that they're summoned. Um, on your end, on every end phase, you take a pearly quick play and attach it to your pearly XZ. That's either from, so you attach from deck or graveyard. Um, what's really important here is that it says once per turn, you can target pearly XZ and then you attach from, from deck or grave. Um, so it doesn't really target what's attaching, but just targets what's attaching to. Uh, so that's kind of important, so like they can't go like, oh, DD Crow, before you can attach, they can't do things like that, but they can, of course, remove the thing that you're trying to attach to, but um, depending on what your board is, that's usually not going to happen. Um, so yeah, two field spell, one per leap is what I wanted to do, and I kind of messed that up. Uh, next up, onto the memories. First off, three pretty memory. Uh, this is like, probably like second best. So, all the, all the memories include this effect where, so they do something like a passive effect. And then they have the effect where you discard a card, special summon a pearly from your deck. So, not per, just pearly, like a pearly monster. So, you can discard a card, not as cost either. So, they can't just wait for you to discard an ash it. They can ash it, but they can't ash it after you discard. So, you summon any of these out of your deck, special summon. So, now your field spell is protecting them. And then, um, so pretty memory, you gain a thousand. Why this is important is because some of the other pearly cards require you to have a monster, or it requires for there to be a monster or card on the field. So this one's the second best because uh, gaining a thousand life points is sometimes not really ideal when you're trying to win a competitive game. Um, but the second effect is also really good. So, you know, um, doesn't target, uh, if this is a, uh, attached as XZ material to one of your pearly XZs, that pearly XZ can now activate the effect where you send a card from your field to the grave, also not as cost, attach a card your opponent controls non-targeting to the XZ. So this can now just like help you out floodgates really well, just outs a lot of things. Um, it's another reason why it's really good against lab, because then you just suck up their set cards, now they have no defense against you. And doesn't target either, so they can't go, oh, okay, now that you're targeting battle chain to do the things. Just no, you have to activate right here. Uh, it's kind of nasty. Uh, best one is the new one, Sleepy Memory. So Sleepy Memory prevents the next time that you take damage, it's reduced to zero. Um, then, again, has that discard, summon a pearly. And then while it's attached to a pearly XZ, on your opponent's standby phase, you draw a card. Um, this is really good because it's a once per turn, soft once per turn. So if you have multiple sleepy memories, you draw multiple cards. And just like a little combo a lot of people know is, uh, so you draw your cards and then you per leap to rank up into one of the, from one of the twos into a seven. And now it's a new pearly, so you activate the uh, sleepy memories again. Um, some people talk about a lot about like, oh, you can draw six off of that. It doesn't happen too often. Uh, I think... All tournament, I drew four cards in one turn off of it. Um, yeah, you kind of, if you open the pearly, then like you can of course do it, but you're usually not digging for this draw six combo. Cause it's, it's kind of, it doesn't come up too often, I don't think in my experience, but um, who knows, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it's like some crazy one card combo that I don't know, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, yeah, I drew like four cards off of it. There's times like I drew two cards off it. Sometimes I drew one, but it's literally it's free card draw. It's insane. And the preventing damage can come up where like uh, you say pretty del uh, pearly delicious memory. So the monster, a monster of your choice can't, doesn't target either. A monster of your choice can't be destroyed by battle until the end of the next turn. Um, so this does not target just says you choose a monster so it means like the effect has to resolve and then you've chosen your monster you can do the discard effect uh so you know you choose a monster to not be able to be destroyed by battle 
Um, so you can choose some this one rank seven that when it attacks, it deals damage on attack declaration, it deals effect damage. So you can go make that monster indestructible by battle, reduce the damage I take to zero, swing into anything, deal that 1500, and then you also have the effect where it gains 300 attack for each material from Delicious Memory. Uh, this also stacks, so if you have multiple copies of Delicious Memory, then say you have two co copies attached. Now that monster is gaining 600 for each cop for each material. Um, and then finally you have Happy Memory. So this is uh, the chosen card can't be short by card effects until the end of the next turn and also gains an additional attack for every copy of Happy Memory. Um, super good. Again, these things all just stack. They're kind of crazy. Uh, so if you have like these attached, you're just stacking your... You're stacking your extra draws, you're stacking your extra attacks, uh, you're stacking your draws. Wait, you're stacking, hang on. You're stacking your extra attacks, you're stacking your attack buffs, you're stacking your draws, and hypothetically, you're stacking your send a card, attach a card. Um, they all stack, they're all pretty nutty. And then um, they all have like these little cute defensive effects, so like a uh, happy memory. So, like I mentioned before, um, Kind of just rambling, I know, but like, like I mentioned before, like this is the card to get rid of. Uh, so if you happy memory, you can make sure this can't be short of a card effects. For example, uh, if they if you activate uh, my friend Pearly and they chain Ghost Ogre, you can go chain happy memory, and then on resolution choose my friend Pearly to be indestructible by card effects. So now the Ghost Ogre will resolve with no effect. You search your thing, you summon your thing from happy memory if you choose to. Uh, just like a lot of different. Very flexible, a lot of different options. Uh, onto the non-engine cards I played. Uh, two copies of Tactical, one Called By. Um, it's kind of just like I'm playing like three copies of Called By, two cop three copies of Talent, same kind of concept. Uh, but the difference is, of course, like Talent is once per turn, so like having this is a lot better than having this in like a hand. So like it's, it's kind of just like you're playing three of whichever, but uh, you can do them more than once per turn in the concept of like, you don't open two of this one, you open two of that one. Uh, and then for this like little discard engine, I played Shadal Beasts and Three Brows. Um, these were really good. I like them a lot. I know some people are on like Cobalt Eagle and like a Rainbow Bridge or something to search the field spell. Uh, I just like the generic draw. Uh, I know some people play uh, Snow with Brow, so that way they can then search the Brow, but I didn't really like that. I just like the idea of, like, just having generic, I discard this, and now it immediately replaces itself. So I can go, like, Happy Memory, Pitch Brow, Summon a Pearly. Uh, brow is mandatory, whereas Shadal Beast isn't. So, like, you summon your Pearly, whichever one doesn't really matter. I summon your Pearly. Uh, you go chain link one brow because it's mandatory chain link two pearly otherwise you can send the beast and now you can chain block it so you can go like one two um but that doesn't really matter unless they have ash because usually it's just like they can imperm valor unless you like you have the field spell uh, there's just layers upon layers like what this deck can do and like what kind of board states like how hard you can prevent your opponent from interacting things like that it's really cool um, so it's just like some extra draw cards and then just like prevent your opponent from hand trapping you out of the game. Uh, so that's a 40 card main deck. Um, that's not 40 card main deck. So I didn't even talk about the hand traps. This deck has so much room for hand traps. Uh, we're going to talk three Veilers, three Drools, three Ash Blossoms. Uh, Drools were crazy all night. Just turned off people's turns. Ash Blossoms, just Ash Blossom. Uh, so the like kind of like tech card is Veiler. Um, so the reason that you play Valor over Imperm in this deck is when you're going first, you build your board, you make your Noir, you attach a bunch of sleepy memories to it, you draw a million cards, right? Um, so when you're going first, if you draw Imperm off the sleepy memory, it's not what you want to really see. Whereas if you draw Valor, now your Valor is still live in your hand. Whereas seeing the Imperm, you can't use it until next turn when you go set it and then have to wait another turn to even get to use it. Um, so, of course, like going second, the Imperm would be better. But uh, going first, it's just uh, kind of like a coin toss, I guess, whichever you feel like playing. But honestly, I think uh, 
This just has a little more application because like you draw into it off the sleepy memory. Um, so now that's 40 cards with the uh, hand traps taken into account. Um, we're gonna talk uh, with about the extra deck now real quick. Um, so the extra deck's really cool. There's a lot of uh, a lot of cats. There's a lot of cats in the extra deck. Uh, best one is Best Boy Plump. Uh, so this one you summon off of your delicious memory, or I guess like your pearlies attaching delicious memory if you want to be technical. But um, yeah, this has a quick effect where you can, uh, well it doesn't have a quick effect, but it has a quick effect. So once per turn you can target two spell or trap and or trap cards in either player's graves, attach them both as XE material to plump. Uh, if you have a delicious memory attached, now plump is a quick effect. So you'll always have the delicious memory attached. You're never making this like, it's two level twos, uh, pearlies are level ones. So you're, you're never making it with like just overlaying two things. You're, you're doing pearlies to make it. So it's always going to have delicious memory. Um, so this is the best one, which I'll talk about in a little bit. And then all of them have this effect that reads up to thrice per turn if you activate a pearly quick play. Chainlink 2, you attach that as XE material. Absolutely nutty. Uh, it's an if effect, so you can't like chain block it, I don't believe. Um, no. Um, so when you activate it, you attach the the pearly, uh, the pearly quick play. So you do that um, up to thrice per turn. But also they will have this other effect that's kind of like stapled onto that. So they will have that thrice per turn but then they do something else. Whereas in Plump's case, then you can banish a monster from the field. So it helps you break someone's board, uh, attaches two material to itself right away. So when after you do, after you summon it off a pearly, so it'll have two material naturally. You'll have delicious memory and a pearly. Then you attach two more things to it, putting it to four. Now you just need to activate any memory in your hand and you have five material on Plump, which I'll talk about why it matters in a little bit. I'm sure most of you actually already know, but we're gonna talk about it anyway. So, Plump is best boy. Uh, next up is our Ghost Second Pearly. Uh, 2000 attack. Uh, you make it with happy memory. Uh, this one doesn't have a quick effect, I don't think. But uh, what it does is at the end of the damage step, after it battles, you search your deck for a Pearly card. You then half the attack of another monster on the field. Uh, it does have that thrice per turn effect, and its additional effect is you can bounce a spell or trap your opponent controls to their hand, so you can use this to out f uh, floodgates, which I did against a lab player when I bounced their Gozen match. Super cool. Um, yeah, so you have some things attack. You make it with happiness, so it has a. Uh, it's already it already has an additional attack because you have happiness attached to it. So then you can search like, go search delicious memory. Um, off like the list memory now it's getting pumped for every material on it so it has one two and like the regular cat attached so it has three materials so it's 2900 and you swing a second attack you can then go search say another copy of happy memory attach the happy memory to it so now it has a third attack swing it search again now you can search either another happy memory to swing again or you can search another delicious memory to make it really big and just like that it has 5xe material and now you're ready to go into another play, which we'll again, we'll talk about in a moment. We're getting there. So two of plump, two of happiness, two beauty. Oh, uh, this is actually one I really don't like. Um, It's supposed to be going first card, right? But usually you're going for plump, so you can make one of uh your bigger, better pearlies. Um, so it's a monster negate. It's kind of like the... Uh, the second thing that you ever put on the board. Uh, if you're going for one, like either Noir or Happiness, X Happiness, whatever you want to call it, um, then you're usually going, of course, going for them first and then making beauty on the side. It's a quick effect negate when it has a pretty memory attached, which again, it always does. Uh, and then um, thrice per turn does the thing, but then also changes the battle position of a monster your opponent controls. Uh, so it's a quick effect monster negate, which is cool. It's just that um, the other options are, it just feels kind of like you have better options. Um, this card's, it's all right. I don't really, see, it doesn't come up too much. There's been games where I like, I make it in like a grind game to kind of like shut my opponent out. But um, yeah, I just feel like you have better options. This is still a two of, but uh, it's not like the end of the world if you're not going into it all the time. 
Uh, and finally, the Top Cat. Uh, it's not finally, but you know. Uh, X Pearly Noir. This is like the big thing, the thing that people are like really actually worried about. Um, so you have two Pearlies that you can make with five material, right? Um, they can constantly get five material on. That's what I mean. But um, while this has, so you just slap this on top of those. If it has five or more material, you just slap Noir on top. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of attack. It has 2800 defense, but it's unaffected by activated effects your opponent activates. Um, so it's effectively a Towers, and since you're usually making it with Plump, it'll have Delicious Memory on it, so it's getting 300 attack and defense for each material, which is, uh, counting Plump, 6 at least, so it's getting 2400 attack and defense, so it's usually gonna have 5200 defense at the very least, so you're gonna always put in defense when you make this thing, unless, like, you're making it in some, like, very weird game state. But, uh, yeah, it's usually going in defense. And then it also has a quick effect, uh, so while it has... Well, it's not a quick effect, but is a quick effect. While it has a level one attached, it's a quick effect. Uh, you detach two material, target a thing, your opponent controls or in their grave, that card goes to the bottom of their deck. This effect is not one is not once per turn. So if you're in like some weird sp position where it's like you have your Noir with your plump attached, your five material, so it has six material, and for some god forget for bin reason, they summon like I don't know, just something that has more than 5,200 attack, and they're able to swing over, you can just go, okay, so on attack decoration, I'm going to detach two material three times and bottom your entire board. Um, They lose their entire board, so, you know, that's really insane. Um, Pretty crazy. The card's really insane. Uh, you make it going first, um... Your opponent usually can't out it unless they have, like, a kaiju. And then you can just tear apart their board with this thing. Or you can just leave all six material on it because it's going to have a lot of attack from Delicious Memory. And then you can just kind of, like, punch them in the face really hard at this thing. This card's really good. Uh, speaking of punching people in the face really hard, Expertly Happiness is the card for that. It's the upgraded copy of Happiness. So it's kind of like a similar concept as Happiness where you make it going second. Um, so when this thing attacks, your opponent takes 15, when it battles, when attack is declared involving happiness, uh, your opponent takes 1500 damage. So for this thing's even dealt battle damage, already dealing damage. Um, if it has five or more material, once per turn, you can effectively dark rule or no more your opponent. So they can't respond with monster effects. All their monster effects are negated, uh, but they still take battle damage. So you just shut off entire boards with this thing. Um, and then... Typically, you'll have, since it's happiness, you're usually, you can make it with plump, so it has delicious memory attached. Uh, if you can get happy memory onto this thing, it's going to be insane because um, it's gaining a ton of attack. If you have happy memory, so it can attack multiple times, uh, it's usually going to be over 4,000 attack, 5,000 attack. Uh, so you just go swing on declaration, burn for 15, deal the battle damage, swing again, burn for 15, deal the battle damage. Uh, that can usually close out an entire game. Um, so interesting interaction that I was mentioning before. You can go, say, Delicious Memory and synergizes with Sleepy Memories. So you can go, the next time that you take battle damage, it's reduced to zero. And then you can go Delicious Memory, so happiness can't be destroyed by the next battle. You can go swing it into something. If it's like your opponent just has one big monster on the field, you can swing it. They take 15, you don't take anything, and happiness isn't destroyed. Swing it again, deal the uh, deal another 15. So sometimes, like, if they're under 3,000, you can, like, do this little three-card combo to, to actually win the game. Even if, like, your opponent has something bigger than x pearly by some, for some reason. Uh, so those are, like, the three big x pearly monsters. Uh, two no wars, one happiness. Uh, double Zeus. Uh, this doesn't really need to be explained too much. It's just, uh, play the second one for Cash Tira. I didn't play against any Cash Tira, but, you know, bear safe than sorry. Um, you know, just board wipe. And if you make it with, like, plump or happy, happiness, so it has, like, a million material on it, you just have, like, a 20 million material Zeus card snutty. Uh, and then our non-engine was one Leerlisk assembled Nightingale. Just, uh, it attacks directly, so you can make a Zeus. 
Uh, Lyrilisk Recital Starling. This card's kind of cool. Um, your opponent takes any battle damage. When, when you take battle damage involving this, your opponent also takes that. Uh, you can kind of use it to, like, win in time or go for game. Just, like, crash into something and just, like, win from the battle damage. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, I didn't really go into this too much. I don't think I... No, I never went into this card today. But I was just playing it as, like, a neat little tech option. Pretty sure... Uh, it's the only card I didn't go into today. And then the last two is uh, Princess Sprite. I think I made her once or twice. Uh, she just detaches. You reveal the top of your deck. If it's a spell or trap, that card goes to your hand. Otherwise, it goes to the grave. So uh, if your opponent somehow, like, if they have, like, double imperm or some, like, weird scenario where, like, they stop both your pearlies from uh, XZ summoning, I think you just slap them into this and then just dig one card deeper. And then finally, uh, our one Link monster... Linguished Anima. Again, like, your opponent, like, turns off your pearlies. If you're going second, you just link the pearly away. And if they're a bad player, you just eat up whatever's, uh, in the extra monsters. Or pointing, like, like, just, like, you know what I mean. Pointing for, in, the, in that zone that Anima points up to. So you just eat up whatever, uh, whatever's over there. Or you force out some kind of interaction. Um... So yeah, it's the, uh, the whole extra deck, the main deck, and then finally the side deck that I played today was kind of wonky. Uh, there's not a whole lot of cards going first, so what they are, though, is two Vanity Sphine, two Rivalry of the Warlords. Now, the reason for these cards is um, they're all designed to prevent my opponent from kaijuing me, uh, Santa Claus, things like that. And if you end on just no war, you don't have to worry about Sphere Mode, of course. You never have to worry about Sphere Mode in this deck. Uh, you don't really have to worry about Nib in this deck. You don't have to worry about Lava Golem most of the time in this deck. Uh, so these are just like, so your opponent can't Kaiju out of the Noir. And then also, they're both Floodgates. Um, so if they don't have the Kaiju, now they're just under Floodgate. If they have the Kaiju, now the Kaiju's a dead card in their hand. And also, they're under a Floodgate. Uh, so both really good cards. Um... I think uh, I saw, I never saw Vanny's Fiend, but I saw Rivalry. Rivalry was pretty good every time I saw it. And then pretty much the rest of the side deck is just going second. Uh, two Ghost Ogres. Uh, that's for the Mirror Match. It's also for Sword Soul. Uh, you stop Prodigy or you stop uh, the new Big Ben Kai. Um, or just like, if you're playing into a matchup where like one of your other hand traps is dead, you can like side them out, side these in and like something else. Uh, three Dark Ruler. This deck's really good at going second, since it has, like, happiness to, like, attack over everything. Uh, and then you have, like, X Pearly. So, like, it's very easy to go second in this deck. And, like, your opponent builds a board, and you just go, like, Dark Ruler, summon your Pearly, swing it, make a Zeus, wipe the board. Uh, you're in good shape. Uh, three Kaijus. I know a lot of people are on Santa Claus, but, uh, I don't know, it just feels like cope to me. Like, these, like, main excuse is, like, well, I can put it in defense, and now I can swing my pearly, but that's really not a problem. Um, it's really not, because, like, sure, the kaiju has to go into attack mode, but most of the time you can make a happiness with delicious memory attached on it, and now happiness can just swing over it. Um, I really don't have this problem that people are just, like, on about, and worst case scenario, you can put the kaiju in the zone that your anima points to and just suck it up with the anima. Uh, you can go pretty memory, send something from your board, take the kaiju if you're that worried about it. Uh, there was never a situation where I was like, oh no, I see a kaiju instead of Santa Claus. I was never worried about it. That just doesn't come up. Uh, and then finally, three lightning storm. Uh, this is just so I had something to play against uh, back row decks. Uh, when I did see it... Um, I saw it against the uh, the lab player, but um, for one reason or another, there's some some reason I couldn't lightning storm. I think I just saw it too late. I just drew into it at a weird point. Uh, I saw it against the sword soul player um, because their board going first was like Shixiao and um, Cheng Ying or something. They they never they didn't make barons. So I was like, okay, I can safely decide in my lightning storms. And then when they did go first in game three. They, then they made the Baron, um, at which point I just played Pearlies to bait out a response. And then once they, like, finally negated with the Baron, it's just, like, Lightning Storm. 
and from there they had no boards. So it's just super uphill momentum from there, and I was able to win that matchup. Uh, yeah, so that is my pearly deck profile. Uh, I had a lot of fun playing this deck. It was super fun. Um, everything, none of the pearly uh, quick plays are once per turn. These cards aren't once per turn. They're not once per turn. They stack. They're insane. Uh, this isn't once per turn. These aren't once per turn. Uh, the hand traps are once per turn. Well, Veilers aren't, and Gruels aren't, but, you know, Ashes. Uh, Brows aren't once per turn. Called by is not once per turn. A lot of things in this deck just aren't once per turn. Uh, again, I'd play two streets, uh, two streets and one per leap. Um, yeah, deck went really well. So, you know, um, if you have any, like, thoughts, ideas, comments, you know, there is a comment section. Let me know what you thought. Uh, any suggestions, things like that. Um, you know, and then, uh, you know, what's, like, a, your favorite pearly card? Something like that. Uh, or, like, what's your... Do you play any, like, spicy extra deck techs? That, you know, let me know about, like, your your spicy extra deck. Um, but, yeah, that is it for this video. I appreciate you guys sticking with me. Like, subscribe, all that cool stuff. And, um, if I don't disappear for another year and a half or whatever, I will see you guys next time. Peace out.